All right, so now we're going to see what happens if we take this same curve and we revolve it about the y-axis. So this time, what we're doing, we're calculating the, uh, what you get here is actually, later on, once you get to multivariable calculus, you'll, you'll learn that this particular object that you get is called a, a circular paraboloid. Okay, so now you get this, this cup shape, okay? When you revolve it over the y-axis, right? And we want to find the surface area. So again, area is always 2 pi r times the arc length element. So here's our little bit of arc length. And here is the radius, right? Because we're going about the y-axis. So that radius, we can write it as either x or we can write it as, well, f of x is equal to x squared, right? So if y is equal to x squared, then x, for this piece, x would be root y. So we can write the radius as x, or we can write the radius as root y. Our ds, we can have as either 1 plus, so the derivative of x squared is 2x. Okay, or we can write it as 1 plus 1 over 2 root y squared dy. Um, same as we did over there. Right. Oops, just realized I forgot my dy last time. Uh -huh. Okay, and you decide which way you want to go. Typically, we try x first just because that's what we're used to, right? So the area is going to be integral from 0 to 1, 2 pi, so r is now x, square root of 1 plus 4x squared times dx. Well, we know how to do that integral, so there's no point in, in seeing what the y version would look like. Um, I mean, we, you know, actually the y one is not that bad. Let's, we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, Definitely y-axis is the easier area problem here. X-axis, we got this integral here where we got to use like either a trig substitution and we get something horrible. Hyperbolic substitution, it's not so bad, but it's still a fair amount of work. Um, with this particular integral here, we can just let u equal to 1 plus 4x squared. So du will be 8x dx, right? 1 over 8 du gives us x dx. Um, when x is equal to 0, u is equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, u is equal to 5. Okay. So this is going to become integral from 1 to 5 of 2 pi over 8. Right? Remember this x and the dx, x dx, it's going to give me the 1 over 8 times du, right? And then this just becomes root u. That's not bad at all. That's pi over 4 times 2 thirds u to the 3 over 2. We evaluate from 1 to 5. So we get pi over 6 times 5 to the 3 over 2 minus 1. Definitely manageable, okay? If you wanted to see what it looks like with respect to y, just, just for the hell of it, why not? Um, it's going to look like this. 2 pi integral from 0 to 1. r now is going to be root y. Our ds is, we'll borrow it from over there, it's 1 plus um, 4y over 2 root y, okay, um, times dy. And ah, cancel the y's, cancel the 2's, and that square root, that's one that you can probably almost do in your head. This is going to be um, pi times 2 thirds times 1 quarter times 1 plus 4y to the 3 over 2 evaluate from, sorry, from 0 to 1, because we didn't actually bother substituting. 0 to 1, okay? 
And so that gives me pi over 6, right, if we simplify all of this. And then put in the 1, we get 5 to the 3 over 2, put in the 0, we get 1. Um, same answer, right? Either way, not so bad.